If my portfolio was a pizza, then a massive 91% would be in UK stocks. Ooh, that was tasty. 8% would be in US stocks. Mmm, nice. And 1% would be in other countries from around the world. Yes, that's absolutely delicious. Now you may have noticed that my portfolio is heavily weighted in UK companies, but these companies are nearly all large cap global giants and members of the FTSE 100, which on average generate 80% of their revenue not from the UK but from around the world. In this video I'll go through my entire portfolio and reveal its performance in the first quarter of this year and since I started way back in 2009. I'll also reveal what I've been buying and selling and my plans for the rest of the year. Over the last 15 years I've been investing mainly in large cap UK companies which I hold for the long term. In recent years I've added several exchange traded funds to increase diversification and reduce risk. I make good use of a stocks and shares ISA using the Barclays Smart Investor platform so I don't have to pay dividend or capital gains tax. I'll go through each sector in ascending order of performance for the year so far. This is not investment advice, I'm simply showing you my own journey. In the mining sector I have one company, Rio Tinto, and it's had a pretty poor year, down nearly 15% so far. Profits for 2023 were lower than expected. Market prices for iron ore have been rising, but copper, diamonds and industrial minerals have fallen. Rio Tinto's profits are closely linked to the Chinese economy, which at the moment is experiencing a few wobbles in the property market. As I go through the slides, this figure shows the average price change so far this year for the companies I have in a given sector. It's only based on the companies I hold and not the industry as a whole. This figure shows the value of my current holding. This figure shows how the price has changed this year, and because Rio Tinto is the only company I hold in the mining sector, it will be the same as the figure at the top. And finally, here is the dividend yield. I have just over £8,000 invested in Rio Tinto, so I would currently expect to receive dividends of around £565 a year. Mining can be a very volatile sector, but over the long term I'm confident it will do well. Next is the renewable energy sector, and I have three companies. Bluefield specialise in solar energy and Greencoat in wind energy. Both pay very high dividends, but over the last three months the share prices have been on a bit of a downward trend. The third company is the Renewables Infrastructure Group, which has a mixture of solar and wind energy assets. Collectively, the renewable sector is down 11.3% since the start of the year. Despite the high dividends, macroeconomic volatility hasn't helped the shares and they are always at the mercy of adverse weather conditions, and the technology is costly to replace and maintain. Now for the utilities sector, and I own three companies. National Grid is more or less unchanged this year, while SSE is down over 10%. Its renewables division has underperformed recently as recent stormy weather has affected profits. The water provider United Utilities is more or less unchanged at the time of this video. In the food and tobacco sector, I have three companies. British American Tobacco and Imperial Brands pay very large dividends, but there has been no significant changes in the share price so far this year. In food, Tate and Lyle has fared a little worse, down 7% so far this year. The company produces food and beverage ingredients, but its third quarter results were a disappointment. It's not a great start, but I plan to hold on for now. In the chemical sector, I have just one company, Croda, and it's down a touch this year. The company supplied a lot of materials during the pandemic, and since then it has suffered somewhat. I'm prepared to hold this one for the long term, and I've even been adding more to it recently. In the brokerage sector, I have two companies, IG Group and a relatively new addition, the London Stock Exchange. The sector as a whole is more or less unchanged so far this year. In the retail sector, I have just one company, Tesco. It's had some difficult times in the past, but it's performing much better lately and is on the slow path to recovery. Recently, the company reported a jump in annual profits and volumes, definitely one for the long term. An ETF now, and this one has the ticker code ISF and simply tracks the FTSE 100. It's up slightly on the year and pays a dividend of 3.8%. 
Here are the top companies you would own. It's weighted by capitalization, so although you would have exposure to all 100 companies, 8.4% would be in Shell. When I can't decide what to buy, I sometimes just add a bit more to this one. In the consumer goods sector, I have three companies. Diageo and Unilever have strong brands and powerful economic moats. The sector is up 3.6% so far this year. 2023 was a difficult year for Diageo when it issued a profits warning. Things have improved somewhat this year, and it should hopefully do better going forward. Unilever has recently announced plans to separate its ice cream business. It will be interesting to see how this affects performance. The third company is Halion, which was spun off from GSK in 2022. It's up slightly this year and its dividend is rising. Here are some of the brands which Halion owns. In the oil and gas sector, I have two companies, BP and Shell. BP is up 5.7% this year and it also pays a decent dividend spread over four payments a year. Shell is the UK's largest listed company and also pays an above average dividend. Since 2009, BP has paid me over £11,000 in dividends and Shell has paid me over £10,000, giving a grand total of £21,240 in passive income. The oil and gas sector can be highly volatile, however, and it really can be a roller coaster ride at times. Next is an exchange traded fund. This one has the ticker code VHYL and is up 5.6%. The yield is 3.5% and you get exposure to almost 1,800 mid to large cap companies from around the world which pay higher dividends. Here are some of the largest ones you would own. I plan to add more to this ETF in the months ahead. In the pharmaceutical sector, I have two companies which I've held for over a decade. The sector is up nearly 8% this year thanks to the recent performance of GSK. Since spinning off its consumer healthcare business, GSK is more focused and streamlined. GSK is a promising new pipeline of products including Blenrep to treat cancer patients and Arexv to protect against a respiratory virus. AstraZeneca is the UK's second largest listed company. I started buying it when the shares were under £30. They are now over £107 a share. In the banking sector, I have three companies. Overall, the banks are up nearly 8% on average, but very mixed fortunes for these two. In my quarterly updates, it's usually HSBC, which does much better than Barclays. But for once, the tables have been turned, with Barclays on a bit of a bull run this year. The bank has been undervalued for some time, mainly due to lingering caution about banks since the financial crisis, despite Barclays returning a profit in each of the last 15 years. This negativity didn't fade, perhaps until now. Dividends in this sector are pretty good. The third company's Lloyds, and it's also had a decent year. Is now the time to start investing in UK banks? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. My own portfolio is with Barclays, but they are quite expensive and there are more cost-effective options out there for those with smaller portfolios or who are just starting out. If you want to get the ball rolling on your own investing journey, then Trading212 will start you off with a free share worth up to £100. Just click on the link in the video description. Next is my S&P 500 ETF and it's had a good run this year, up over 10%. You get exposure to 500 of the largest US companies in just a single share. The ongoing charges are incredibly low at 0.07% and there is even a small dividend spread over four payments a year. I've been adding plenty to this ETF recently. Into the top three now and it's the information technology sector. I have just one company, Relex, which is up nearly 12% on the year. This is a relatively new addition to the portfolio, but it's been doing very well so far. My second best performing sector is insurance, and I have just one company, Aviva, and it's up 14.5% this year. It also pays a good dividend of 6.7%. Aviva is a more streamlined and focused business these days. It is making acquisitions and has also reported strong organic growth and I'm confident it will do well over the long term and will hopefully continue to churn out decent dividends. 
And there is no surprise yet again, the highest performing sector is defence and aerospace. BAE Systems is up 21% as countries around the world have boosted their defences. Rolls-Royce is up 43% as we all return to the skies. Rolls-Royce is now the largest holding in my portfolio. Over the last couple of years, I've invested £11,000 into the company and the investment has grown to nearly £50,000. Now for all my buys and sells this quarter and all I ask in return is a quick tap of that like button as it really helps out the channel. With the portfolio now paying out an average of over £1,200 a month in dividends, I don't always have to put new money in to buy more shares. Here are all the purchases I've made so far this year. I've put more into my S&P 500 ETF than any other share. I'd buy it when I fill up my ISA. I can keep it outside as it has a very low dividend yield. Relex is a relatively new addition. Its dividend yield is low, so that's another company I buy outside the ISA when there is no more room. As I already mentioned, Diageo has had some difficult times recently, so I've bought a few more shares on the cheap. I've also added more to the London Stock Exchange Group and also Crowder, both of which I keep outside the ISA as their dividends are low. And finally, I've added a bit more to my long-term favourite, Unilever. Even without ice cream, it's still going to be a very tasty part of my portfolio. There have been no sales at all in the first three months of the year. To see what I do next, just hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. So what are my plans for the months ahead? Well, I intend to add more to all my ETFs. Rolls-Royce has started to dominate the portfolio, so I'll probably give it a bit of a haircut. And I'm a bit concerned about solar energy. Maybe a tough decision has to be made. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Cash in the portfolio currently stands at 5,682. Now for the portfolio performance this year. At the end of 2023, the portfolio stood at 415,000 and at the end of March 2024, the portfolio stands at 455,000. 8,700 pounds of new money has gone in, giving me a net gain in value of 30,000 pounds for the first three months of this year. That's a 7.3% gain. I'm now going to compare the performance of the portfolio this quarter with other indices. To do this fairly, I'll strip out any dividends I've received so far this year. With dividend payments ignored, the net gain is 6.5% for the first quarter of 2024. You can see in this table that the portfolio has outperformed the FTSE 100, 250 and the FTSE All Share Index. But it's performed less well against the S&P 500 and All World Index. As you saw earlier, I'm now putting more into the S&P 500 than any other share, and I'll continue to do so going forward. Now for my overall performance since I started in 2009. I made plenty of mistakes in the early days as I was learning and these results include everything. The total amount I put into the platform is 255k, but remember I didn't put all of this in at the start in one lump sum. I simply drip fed in spare money each month. If I had been able to put all this money in right at the start, my gains would have been much greater. And of course I would have done much better if I had invested into an index tracking ETF right from the beginning. But they were not mainstream back then and I was limited to buying individual UK companies on my Barclays platform. As you have seen, the value of the portfolio stands at 455k, giving me a current gain of 199,000 or 78%. Many investors will have done much better than this, of course, but I'm only showing you my own journey. Now, over the long term, share prices not only tend to rise, but many companies pay out dividends to their shareholders. To see how I grew my passive income from one penny a day to 50 pounds a day by following a simple plan, then click this video here.